Our brains get tired, we know that, but how do we handle it when that happens? Today, Kathy's talking about how to support your brain and enjoy the productivity you're striving for. Use the post-it method today to find pockets of time in your schedule. Hello friends, welcome to today's wellness pop-up. You're gonna need a few tools today. You're gonna need two post-its. I don't care what size, I don't care what color. However, I do like color. Just two, two post-its and a pen. We're gonna find pockets of time with two post-its. We could all use more time, right? Let's go find it. All right, my beginning question though that I want us all to think about is, how well do you know your brain? What do you do when you get tired? What does your brain do when it gets tired? Have you ever thought of it? Do you, have you ever realized it? Do you pay attention to your brain? I know that certain times during my day and certain times in my evening, my brain gets tired because I start to check social media posts. I start to check my email, but it more, looks more like this. I more like stare at my email. I don't really want to do my email, like get through it or answer any questions. I just, I just stare at it. <laughs> I just stare at it and, and really want it to go away. Or I just sit in social media and scroll, just scroll. It might be Facebook, it might be LinkedIn, it might be TikTok videos. It, I just scroll. I mean, what a mindless waste of time right? Uh, there's times that I might take a nap or at least want to take a nap. Uh, and there's times, especially in the evenings where I eat, I don't need to eat at 8:30 at night. And the food that I'm choosing at that hour is junk. It doesn't need to be consumed, but I'm tired. My brain is tired. I just want to do something mindless. Well, well, first of all, know that your brain is going to get tired during the day. Okay. It's not only going to get tired at night when it's time for bed, but it's also going to get tired during the day. And actually scientists prove that about six hours after we wake up, we're going to hit a trough. We're going to hit that, that downward motion in our brain where we need to revive it somehow. If you really calculate some time frames here, if I get up every day around six o'clock, Six hours later is lunchtime. And then I go eat my lunch and now I've created in me this opportunity for food coma. I definitely want to nap at that point. And in certain cultures, they do have some siesta time, <laughs> but that doesn't always play well into my culture and my, my schedule. So I, I need to know, I need to know that I'm going to get tired in the day. And now I need to set myself up for success when it happens. It's going to happen after lunch, it's going to happen. So what could I do or what should I do when my brain gets tired? Well, the first thing I can think of is don't buy junk food. <laughs> okay. Even this, don't even go into the kitchen when I'm tired or bored. Just, just don't go there, but that's a whole different topic. Let's, let's talk about something more productive here. Something else that I can, I can do is, is purposely not open email. Or, or social media, where I could just scroll and stare. Don't even open it. Our brains, when we do get tired, a great way to refresh it is to move the body. So I could go for a walk. And walks actually spark creativity in our brains. Steve Jobs knew this. He would go on walking meetings. He didn't meet in a conference room or at his desk. They went on walking meetings because it's removing the brain, it's re-energizing the brain, and it's literally creating creativity. Or you could follow the post-it plan. When your brain is tired, depend on your post-its. Follow the post-it plan. So what is the post-it plan? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Thank you. The post-it plan is two post-its a day. And the first post-it, it actually, it actually starts the night before. So before you shut down for the evening or even just shut down for the day, when you leave your office, I want you to grab one 
post-it note. And I want you to write down the top three priorities for tomorrow. Max of three, okay? Max of three things. Don't go crazy and make this a task list. I want you to prioritize the top three priorities that you need to do tomorrow. This is gonna cause you to look ahead, not only at tomorrow's calendar, but maybe even the day after, maybe even for the next week. It's gonna cause you to pause and focus in and just think, what did I not get done today? What do I need to get done tomorrow? Once that post-it's done, now you can shut down for the day. And now you can let your brain have a break in the evening. Many times if I don't do this, my brain is constantly thinking of everything I forgot to write down or everything I forgot to do for today. Don't do that to yourself. Allow your brain to, to seriously get a break in the evenings, on the weekends. There's a time to put the work away. And when I can brain dump on a post-it, I feel more confident about my success tomorrow. So once that's done, I'm gonna have a great evening. I'm going to have a great dinner at the right hour. I'm going to maybe even get some downtime, like reading a book, not snacking on junk food. I'm gonna get a great night's sleep and I'm gonna wake up the next morning ready to start my day. So whatever your morning routine might be, when you get to work, you need a, a routine as well. You know, when I first get up in the morning, I have a morning routine. When I first get to work, I need a morning routine. That's where post-it number two comes into play. So, so now I've got two post-its ready to go. What, what does my morning look like? Well, when I get into the office and boot up my computer, I am going to not open email, not open social media, and get to the first thing on my post-it that I listed yesterday. I'm gonna get to it and get it done. This is actually called the Eat That Frog concept. So there's a book. Brian Tracy wrote a book called Eat That Frog. Now Brian did not come up with the idea. He stole it from Mark Twain. Mark Twain said that when you get up in the morning, go out and find the biggest, ugliest frog and eat it first thing. Everything else you do that day is going to be a piece of cake. Pun intended. <laughs> so think about your frogs. Your frogs are probably sitting right here on the post-it. Don't allow your brain to get distracted by all the other garbage and distractions that we have in front of us. Focus in and get to that top priority. And while you're doing it, that's when post-it number two is going to sit right next to you, always with you. And this is why I love post-its, because of that sticky, right? I could put it on my book. I could put it on my day planner. I could take it with me if I'm moving to different rooms. This is always going to sit next to me because it never fails. I may not have opened any of the distractions. I may have shut off my phone, not even opened email, not opened social media, shut my door, allowed myself to zone in, and random thoughts come in my head that have nothing to do with the project I'm working on. Like, hey, what are we having for dinner tonight? Ooh, did you take the meat out of the freezer? Oh, I wonder in two weeks when I go visit my parents wh whether I should bring them. Why does our brain do that? Why am I thinking of stuff that has nothing to do with the project that I have listed as my number one priority? Because that's just the way we're wired. That's just the way that we're wired. We cannot shut that off. So let's just give our brain a tool. When these thoughts come in my head, if it's something I need to remember, I just take my pen and write it down. And then I go back to the project I was working on. It's a really interesting thing. When I do this and I brain dump onto that post-it, now my brain trusts that I'll get back to it. I will get that done because it's written down. I can now allow my brain to refocus on the priority. It's an amazing tool that allows me to focus. Now, here's, here's what I've done in the past. Because sometimes I'm um, a little hard to convince that this is really gonna work. <laughs> so I have done some little tests on myself. And thankfully, I've done some timing of my work. One day, I got into the office and I had a class scheduled for 10 o'clock that morning. I got in the office around eight o'clock and I had nothing 
planned for the class. I was a little nervous because usually I put a lot of time and effort into everything I teach. This was my number one priority. I didn't need a post-it. It was playing in my head all night long. I got in the office, did not turn on any of those distractions like my phone or the email. I even put little posters in the window by my door so that I could not see who was coming to work and they, and they couldn't see me sitting at my desk. So I shut off the world. And then I turned on my timer and I got focused in on the content for that class. 80 minutes later, with plenty of time to spare, I was ready. And I was so excited. I was ready for the class that was going to start. And then I had to open my email because I had to send an email to all the attendees. I forgot that I didn't check it yet today. I forgot that I didn't even have it open. I forgot because I got so into the, the, the creation process that I was in, I just, I just forgot. So when I opened my email, I saw 15 unread messages from that morning and oh, gasp, oh my gosh, the, the stress increased immediately within me. There's something that's been created in this world that says email is ultra important and I better answer it as soon as I receive it. Well, I don't know who made up that rule, but I'm not going to choose to follow it. You know, I thought if I had my email open while I was working on the, co on the content, it would have cost me at least one minute per email. That's 15 minutes that it would have taken away from my focus. I wonder how long it's going to take me to get to these emails now. So again, I timed myself. It only took me eight minutes to get through those 15 emails. I just saved myself seven minutes. There's a pocket of time. By shutting off my distractions, I saved myself seven minutes. That's huge. I mean, some of the emails were garbage, delete. Some of the emails took care of themselves. You know, somebody asks you, hey, do you have this? And two seconds later they say, "Never mind, I found it. Th those were the types of emails that I was really sorting through quite quickly. It was amazing. I allowed myself to get into the flow of the project and complete that number one priority with using my best brain. No distractions, no other garbage cl clouding my way. I was, I was using my best brain. That's what this is about. And then once I complete number one project on my list, I could go on to number two project or I could treat email like a project. Once my first priority is done, I can come back and say, okay, open email, deal with whatever you see. Is there a higher priority that just came in that should intercept and be my priority number two of the day? Or can I close it down again and move on to priority number two? Then we get to our tired brain. Then we get to the one o'clock time frame, or maybe the 4.30 time frame. I don't leave work till five o'clock, but ugh, what am I gonna do for 30 minutes? Everything that you wrote down on that extra little post-it that's been married to, the, to you the whole day, that's what you're gonna do now. Now I'm gonna go in and reply to an email, or I'm gonna send an email, or I'm gonna go get the meat out of the freezer and put it on a plate upstairs in my kitchen, or Whatever that might be, I'm now getting to all of those random thoughts and tasks and ideas that arrived in my brain at extremely inopportune moments. Now I'm getting everything done. You know, it's amazing what you can get done in 15 minutes when you have everything set up for yourself. I don't have to stop and think, hmm, what should I do now? I just go over to my second post-it and start checking things off and getting them done. Then I move on to priority three. Then I move on to priority four. Wow, talk about a productive day. Treat email like its own project instead of a constant interrupter. I didn't even talk about social media notifications. Why bother? Why even bother looking at that? I get it. Sometimes it's for work. And I, I know some of you have a BS flag that you want to throw in my face. By the way, I'm challenging your belief system. We all have reasons for doing what we're doing, right? But I challenge you. I challenge you to give this a try. 
I challenge you to use post-its to find those extra minutes in your day that will help you be more productive. So what's your action item going to be? Of all the ideas I gave you, what are you going to choose to try? Prove it. Prove me right or wrong, but you can't prove it until you give it a try. Are you going to turn off your email and treat it like a project? Are you going to get two post-its? Today before you leave, are you going to write down your top three priorities for tomorrow? My friends, don't depend on your brain to think, especially when it's tired. Don't depend on motivation. Don't depend on feeling it. Just do it because you're following your system. Be great today, my friends. We'll see you next time.